is my great pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Paul Rubik. Uh, Dr. Paul Rubik is a member of the European Union's Economic and Social Committee, President of SME Global, member of the Governing Board of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, and former member of the European Parliament representing Austria from 1996 to 2019. Uh, Dr. Ruby will provide a keynote address on the European <coughs> Union strategic initiatives and EU Israel cooperation on energy and security. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Paul Ruby. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ruby, thank you so much for your optimistic uh, presentation. And uh, also, I, I looked at your presentation that you uh, shared with us. Uh, where it says that according to the recently published 2021 EU Industrial Research and Development Investment Scoreboard, uh, China has increased its uh, research and development investments from 2020 to 2021 by 18.1%, while the US has increased its investment in research and development in the same period uh, for 9.1%. Whereas the EU, EU 27 <coughs> have decreased their R&D investments by a minus, actually, by 2.2%. So there is a real problem. Mm -hmm. And so where do you see uh, the funding coming from? How would you, what would your solution be? How do we increase investments in the research and development and get more of a private funding as well? So for the individuals, I mean, corporations that uh, are spearheading actually innovations in, in different fields. Yes, uh, I think we only will solve the problems of the future in being prepared uh, with the right solutions. So uh, if you see European Union on a minus 2%, uh, it was a battle on rural development and uh, agriculture, uh, and some of the money shifted to the agricultural area, which I think is quite good, and to research infrastructure to the regional strategies. But overall, it's too less. We had an expert uh, committee uh, with uh, with our former uh, commission, commissioner of trade, uh, who's, who they made a very good study and they said uh, the best GDP growth we would get if we double uh, the expenditure for research and science. Huh? And uh, I was also in South Korea. Uh, the parliament there, the parliamentarians told us very uh, happily uh, that they do now more than four uh, percent for research and they want to put every year 10% up by 4%. That's a world record. Huh? Uh, and uh, therefore, I think research and uh, innovation uh, should be in the middle of the political debate uh, because that's what our next generation can get profit on. It's not uh, putting uh, your back to the street and uh, demonstrate. Huh? I think go to the school and learn and uh, find out solutions how you can improve as a future world. Right. And uh, my last question actually is regarding energy. Uh, this uh, aggressive invasion of Ukraine showed us how vulnerable we are and how important it is to preserve energy independence and uh, being energy reliant. So um, uh, and Germany depends on 50% of its gas is coming from Gazprom, so Russia's state-owned company. And uh, we saw how um, uh, Prime Minister Merkel, or Chancellor Merkel, uh, phased out uh, windmills, which showed to be disaster, renewable energy disaster. And then they actually phased out the last three nuclear plants by the end of 2021. All of a sudden, Russia's, Russia invaded Ukraine, and now uh, any kind of... Uh, Embargo, it doesn't, it's not working because Russia's, um, Germany is so reliant on uh, Russia's gas. So in, in this case, uh, how do we uh, make it possible? Because we obviously need to rely on base load energy, which is not intermittent as renewables are. So we do, it, it, is, it does need to come from fossil fuels or nuclear energy. But what is your, uh, you know, response? How do we preserve energy independence? And you know, from my basic education, I'm an engineer, an agricultural engineer, yeah? and I started business administration, and I did my thesis on international patent and license policy, so intellectual property. And I think that's uh, exactly what we have to do. We have to calculate. What's possible? And we have looked into the German issue. 
uh, said how they built windmills up uh, till now and of course it's had a very good increase and in the last time uh, the increase was very slow uh, and if they would uh, build windmills uh, till they have it done up till today it would take 160 years uh, to have the power to uh, to do it uh, like we have it now. <coughs> if you see that in this time maybe the energy demand on electricity will double, uh, uh, it's clear that we need any kind of energy production uh, if we want to uh, cope uh, with the demand uh, in the future. Uh, if you look how much uh, energy gaming is, is, is used, uh, uh, all the artificial intel intelligence, the algorithms which we use in a daily manner. Uh, so from this side, we will need uh, a lot of energy and also e-mobility uh, and heat pumps and oh, everybody is asking for more uh, products in, in the electricity, uh, but uh, the production of uh, electricity facilities uh, is not really on the agenda. So I wonder what can we do in our countries ourselves? And uh, two years ago, I was here and had a long talk with uh, the energy minister. Uh, Israel has a wonderful chance uh, with the gas field uh, in front of the country. Uh, if we could get uh, a consortium, uh, maybe with Egypt, maybe with uh, Cyprus, uh, Europe would have a big demand on, on, on energy. And I think uh, to create here a platform uh, which delivers uh, what uh, the need of the people is, would be a win-win situation for both sides. Thank you so much, Dr. Borbeck. Thank you.